Guys, I've been meaning to do a video for a long time about wiring up a heat pump using two outdoor uh, two outdoor conductors with your thermostat wire. Just like you would wire like a yellow and blue to your contactor for a straight AC, except for sometimes you don't have the proper amount of conductors to your outdoor unit. Now if you have three conductors, you're pretty much good to go because you can put a transformer outside. But what happens if you only have two? If you only have two conductors, then you face a major issue. So I'm going to show you how to get around that major issue using only a couple relays and a transformer. So follow along and I'll teach you how to wire this thing up. So if your guys ever run to a situation in the field where they're replacing an AC and they want to go back with a heat pump, they can. And it's not too difficult, really, once you think about it. Follow this wiring diagram and let me know what you think, guys. All right, we're going to go over this wiring diagram step by step. And I have the picture there in front of you right now. And I'm looking at it myself following along. And as you can see, the air handler has a transformer, but we also put a transformer labeled transformer two on the heat pump. What that does, that takes care of the common and red wires right off the bat. So now if you have two conductors, you already got two of them taken care of, the ones you would have had, because now you have the transformer taking common and hot. Now, your commons for the indoor transformer and outdoor transformer should be grounded. Sometimes the machines do ground them, sometimes they don't. So I'd like you to ground both the commons. That way there's a baseline between the two transformers so that the wires will communicate well with each other. Otherwise, think about common and hot as a measure of 24 volts between point A and point B. Now there's no way of telling that if the point A and point B on transformer 1 will be the same as the point A and point B on transformer 2. We like to make sure that they measure 24 volts from the same source, which will be ground. Make sure those are grounded and they won't communicate properly in all instances. Let's look over there at the thermostat. I've got an O, W2, G, and Y. Now our R and C will wire up to the thermostat. We already know that. The main two wires we're going to be looking at is O and W2. And this is going to be for a cooling active system. We can do a heating active system at a different time as far as reversing valve, but most of them will be cooling active, so we're going to go with cooling active. Our G goes straight through to the fan terminal on the air handler. That's not going to change. The Ys will pass straight through and go to the outdoor unit. So basically now the outdoor unit is down to one conductor. Look all the way over to the outdoor unit and you'll see that O and W2 are tied together. So those signals are going to be tied together all the time. In the center of the picture, we have two relays. You'll see a group of pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins on the left, eight pins on the right. Those are both 9340 double pole, double throw relays with 24 volt coils. The coil on the left is energized by O and common. The coil on the right is energized by W2 and common. And sometimes that'll be W2 slash auxiliary. You can mate the W2 and auxiliary or W2 and emergency heat wires together on the thermostat, just like we used to do in the past. That's not a problem. Let's follow what goes on on the relays, because that's where everything happens. We see transformer one gives power to the top left of each relay. So we have 24 volt hot going to the top left corner of each relay. Now, when that relay is switched, the one on the left, for the energized reversing valve, you see that the red goes from the normally closed to normally open, and that power flows to the O and W2 tied together outside at the unit. Therefore, that unit will have the reversing valve energized when the O and common energize the coil for the first relay. As you can see with the blue polka dots, there's jumpers on the relay, but when the relay is energized, you see it will pass from one jumper to the other one, but will not pass through the relay because it will switch from normally closed to normally open. And that signal will end there. And that completes our cooling. And even in cooling, as you see, there's a W2 brown run to the other coil, and the red to the top of the W2 relay, we'll call it this, the one on the right, the W2 relay, if you have a thermostat that uses electric reheat, it will still energize those heat strips just like it would otherwise, 
when the W-2 and Comet energized the second 9340 double pole double throw relay. Now let's look at heating. Heating does not have an energized reversing valve on this schematic. So that red on the left relay, or the, or the O relay we'll call it, just deadheads at the top and doesn't go anywhere. But the real thing happens whenever defrost occurs. That's what makes it so difficult to plan out. So we see our O and W2 tied together. So when defrost occurs, W2 and O are both energized. Now the O is energized from the outdoor unit and travels to the reversing valve, which is also in the outdoor unit. So we don't really have to worry about that one. W2 travels along the orange and brown path to the relay. But since the O relay is not energized, that jumper, it passes across through the normally closed terminals across to the other relay following the blue dotted line across those normally closed terminals and onto W2 to energize the heat strips. Now, if the W2 relay is energized because the heat strips are already on, it's irrelevant because power is passing from the R at the top left corner of the W2 relay to the heat strips already. So as you can see, it takes a little planning out, but the relays do work. What you have to watch out for is the backtracking voltage during other cycles to make sure your relays communicate properly. If you have any questions, please let me know. Phone number is 910-789-4714. Text me your questions. Email them to talent875pro at yahoo.com.